coming up for sophisticated and I read some scriptures and I posted some stuff on Facebook and I and I reposted that said if you don't repost me because I'm Jesus then you're gonna have seven years of bad luck and all this nonsense I did that God and he gonna be like depart from me evil do it for I did not know you because you, I did not have a relationship with you who are you all you did was a bunch of works and you put on a fancy show and you said you was Christian but did you know me <laughs> Dedication, preservation, preservation. Take a look inside. Do your salvation. Do every good work. It takes patience. It takes patience. Like a butterfly. What's up guys, Sophia here and I'm back with another video. Before we get on into it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated on all my videos. And don't forget to hit the description box because I put a lot of stuff in there. And oh yeah, including my Patreon where I talk about all things leveling up. And what this video is going to be about is the difference between religion and relationship and do you even know what it is? Why we're doing what? Okay. So the reason why I want to talk about this is because I'm a huge advocate of having a relationship with God. And in fact, I would beg to argue, which I will in a moment, that this is exactly what God wants us to have. A lot of people get stuck in the religious, I am a Christian aspect, and they don't have no type of relationship with God. And we know that because the main thing when Jesus came back was the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they got so caught up in their religion I am a Pharisee and a Sadducee. I have been trained. I know this. I am not. You must not be God. You must not be the son of man because I am a Pharisee. And Right. And they missed the boat because they did not understand the relationship. They could not relate to God and they saw themselves higher than what they were because of their religion. And that is the basic difference. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm actually going to start um, with this specific verse in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. So it says, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day when I judge him, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare from them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are banished from my present presence. You who act wickedly, disregarding my commandments. So here you have on Judgment Day individuals who thought that they were going to get into heaven because they performed works or things in the name of the Lord. And so I want to compare this to the aspects of religion. Don't just think, oh, I go to church every Sunday. I must be going to heaven. It's about the knowing of God. All right. So I'm going to go into um, 1 John 3, chapter 6. And it says, no one who abides in him who remains in united fellowship, fellowship, fellowship. Remember that word. With him deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practice sin. No one who habitually sins have seen him or known him oh this is what i was talking about let's get deep now some of y'all are not gonna like this yes god graces us and he forgives us for our sins right but understand that that is grace when you try when you intentionally try not to sin and you make an effort but we know that man can never be perfect because we're just not that way and we're always going to sin so yes fine we're going to sin however should I wake up today and talk about all the sins or know that I'm going to continuously sin throughout the day and tell myself, oh, I'm just going to steal that money at work. And after I'm done, I'm going to ask God for forgiveness or, oh, no, 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 no. That's not how this works. Because guess what? Not you're planning the sin. You have now set your mind forth to intentionally sin. And now you're abusing God's grace to take advantage of it. Because if you really knew God, like they said, you're not going to habitually sin. And if you do, yes, forgive me, Jesus. However, what God appreciates is this. If you know me, I'm going to convict your behind before when you start thinking that. I'm going to go sleep with somebody's husband. God's going to be like, oh, no, you're not. And then you're going to start to feel like, you know what, God, you're right. I respect you too much to sit up here and sit in your face and then come back and be like, forgive me. Like nothing is wrong. So that's how you have to see. Imagine you in a relationship and somebody's cheating on you. They're like, okay, I'm not going to cheat on you again. And you're like, okay, I forgive you. And tomorrow they cheat on you again. 
I'm not going to cheat on you. Okay, I forgive you. And next day, and next day, and next day. At one point, you're going to feel disrespected. And you're going to get pissed off. Because now they're mistaking your kindness for weakness. And that's how Jesus said, yeah, I forgive you. But don't mistake my kindness for weakness. And don't sit up here and continuously do wrong in my face. And come back. Like, like we all good. Can you at least try to do right and try to do what I'm telling you to do and listen to the Holy Spirit inside of your heart before you go out and do it and control your flesh and say no? There's a thought. So that's the difference between relate relationship and religion. Religion says, oh, do whatever you want. And because we have the grace of God, he'll just forgive you. Relationship says, how about you listen to me? Try not to sin and Try to do what I ask you to do instead of going out there intentionally doing and thinking that just because you're a Christian and you accepted the blood of Jesus, that is all good. Knowing that you wasn't supposed to do it in the first place and all you had to do was say no. What? Because it's like your levels of Christianity or your relationship with God is always going to come in levels, right? I was not like this 10 years ago. Nah, nowhere near. Maybe even five years ago, right? Nowhere near. But see, it's a gradual change that God appreciates. It's like, okay, so he not going to ask you to change all at once. But see, that's the fellowship. He going to be like, you know this thing about your little personality, boo? I don't like it. I'm going to need you to change that. And then what you going to do? You're going to say, oh, but I've accepted the Lord and I don't need to change. No, God said change. You respect him. You listen to him. You have a relationship with him. You feel it. You know that being like that is messing you up. And so you change. That might take a year, it might take two years, and then God is like, okay, this little thing about you, I don't like that either, get rid of it. And you change because that is the fellowship. Religion says I can sit here and be worldly exactly the way that I am and all of my wrongness and all of my craziness, and it is still okay. And it's not. Because at what point are you gonna start listening to what Jesus died for? That whole Holy Spirit that's supposed to be talking to you? When are you gonna start listening to that? Because he's talking. And he's telling you something for a reason. And if you don't hear it, then that's when you need to work on your relationship, yeah? Because that's what he's there for, right? So that's what I'm actually going to go into. If you go into Genesis 3.8, I have actually spoken about this extensively um, <clears throat> in many of my videos. My last video about the, the explaining the Trinity, I spoke about this. And in one of my devil videos, I spoke about this. Was that it was God's intention always for us to um, communicate with him. Always. And so what happened was when Adam and Eve jacked up things for everybody, what had happened was that we kind of cut off that line of communication from us and God. And so that is why Moses had to receive the written law because nobody could really hear from God. Yes, he chose select people, but it wasn't like they had the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus died for. And that's what he gave us when, um, when he died. Everybody could speak to God, right? But prior to that, it was just like these select people. And so people probably didn't know what was evil, what was not evil. They was just following their flesh and stuff because they ain't know. And so that's why Moses had the laws written down, right? And so they have a general guideline as to what to follow. And so there's two points, I'm gonna get sidetracked, that I wanna make on that. Because a lot of people get confused about the Moses commandments and the New Testament. And so it's like, that was a guideline because people couldn't be governed by the Holy Spirit. So yes, just like Jesus said when he came, they specifically asked him which one of the commandments are greater than the other ones. Jesus said this, forget about all that. Love God with all of your heart. And the second is on to like it is to love your neighbor as yourself. And that is what the commandments encompass because people kept messing up because what Jesus did, and this is in um, Mark 3, 1 through 6, and even in John 9, 16 through 7, when he healed somebody on the Sabbath day and the laws of Moses said that you are supposed to rest on the Sabbath, the Pharisees and the Sadducees got, them, got themselves all upset and was ready to crucify Jesus because they was talking about the written word and that you were not supposed to do that. But Jesus was trying to tell them, look at the action, look at the fellowship, look at the relationship and what God will want you to do. Do you think God would rather have me help this man and is in my ability to do so? Or do you think that God would rather have me turn my back on somebody that it is within my will to help simply because it is the Sabbath? And so what he was saying is don't get so religious that you pay so much attention to all of this hoopla that you forget 
what God is and he is love. And anything that you do out of love, except for like just fornicating and sleeping with a hoe, but I feel like I need to say that. If you just going out there like, oh, I'm doing it that's out of love, I'm freeing and giving my body. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. But anything that you do off of genuinely love and that you know that God will look upon you and say, wow, I am happy that you did this, God is fine with it. But he was saying, pay attention to the relationship. Pay attention to what God is telling you and don't just get so caught up in, oh, for it is written for the laws of Moses for because they missed it. So I got a little sidetracked, but I want to go back to Genesis um, 3, 8. And this is where I was talking about that it was always God's intention to have fellowship with us and talk to us and have the relationship. So this is with Adam and Eve. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the afternoon breeze of the day. And so the man and his wife, and they kept to themselves and they hid because after this is when they fell from grace, right? So if you notice, and this is something that I talked about in my Trinity video, Jesus was God come to the flesh, right? And the reason why is because they had, to, is because a flesh, a fleshly man being tempted in every way, feeling pain and not being omniscient and all knowing like the God I am is in the Old Testament had to come and atone for the sins that Adam and Eve had done. Like, at, like Adam and Eve was put here to live in perfection and be one with God. They messed up because they, you know, was tempted to the devil. So now Jesus had to come. God had to come in the form of Jesus in the same way that Adam and Eve did man and resist the world's temptation to atone for their sins. So I'm saying that because when you read this verse, notice God never had a body. If you talk about the Old Testament, he's talking to people in a burning bush. He's talking to people on fire out the sky. But before Jesus, it don't talk about God like showing up with a body because God was the presence when he was talking to them. And that what was and that is what was taken away. So I want to read the verse again. And they heard the sound. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the in the cool of the day. So it's like God was not just like walking. So it's like the garden in the cool afternoon breeze in the cool of the day. So it was like a presence in the garden of Eden in which you could feel similar to like the Holy Spirit coming to live in us, which is what Jesus died for. So we could get that back, that fellowship, that communication. Gradually, when Cain and Abel came, you see that was the first murder. And then slowly and surely as time went by, man, it got more evil because that presence, um, that fellowship, that them talking to God was lost because of the sin that happened. So what is my point? Because I feel like I'm going on a tangent, but I'm not. If we're talking about relationship and religion, sure, say you're Christian, fine, great, dandy, wonderful you. But ultimately, the relationship, that is what is important. You need to have that. That is what Jesus died for. That is what God intended for us from the very beginning. And if you don't have that, you don't want to be like the people in the beginning of the people say, oh, but God, I went to church and I read some scriptures and I posted some stuff on Facebook and I, and I reposted that said, if you don't repost me because I'm Jesus, then you're going to have seven years of bad luck and all this nonsense. I did that, God. And he going to be like, depart from me, evil do it for I did not know you because you, I did not have a relationship with you. Who are you? All you did was a bunch of works and you put on a fancy show and you said you was Christian, but did you know me though? And so that is what God's intention is for you. And so when people are looking at me like, Sophia, you're weird because you like talk to God. No, I'm not weird and I'm not special and I don't stand out. There's nothing eloquent about me at all, except for the fact that I said one day, God speak to me and tell me what you got. And he just did it. And he can do the same for you if you're willing and you're open to receive it. And the more that you do it, the more God will talk to you and the more you will hear his voice and the more fellowship and the more communication in you, that you will get and the more that you will know his will for your life and the more that you won't get so caught up in you being the first lady, the deacon and all this other type of stuff in the church. And you will see that none of that determines if you go to heaven. What determines that you go to heaven is who you are and who God has made you to be. And if you're listening to him or not. Yeah. And that don't mean you got to be perfect because nobody is. But God does give an A for effort. Don't not not try. Right. Oh, I'm Christian. And you, you ain't try to do nothing. You ain't try to be better. You lie. You cheat. You steal. You backstab every single day. But because I call myself a Christian, it's all good. Are you? Cause God, you ain't listening to God. You, you, he never knew you. If you, if he did, you would at least try to change those things and not justify them. So that is the difference. 
All right, all right. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to share this video if you like it or just share it just because you like me. <laughs> and I will see you guys another day, another time. Bye, y'all.